everybody. This is Brady Henderson, the senior pastor at First Baptist Church in Gaston, and I'm here with the co-host, Alan Ott of the Menorah Podcast today. How's everybody doing? We're doing good today. Good, good. So, Alan, we are here today kind of in a mini-series, and so I believe this is episode 21. This is the third part of our Family Matters mini-series that we're doing in our podcast. So, what you think about the first two episodes, kind of how that went? First two episodes went really well. I'm looking forward to uh, hearing this one. Yeah, me too, man. It's It's been really good to hear the feedback from some of our listeners, you know, those that might not necessarily been able to attend the workshop that we did in person. You can listen to these episodes and be able to hear a little bit about what we learned. So just to kind of back up the first episode, and by the way, uh, just kind of a disclaimer, if you missed the first and second episodes, probably going to be more beneficial for you to go back and get those uh, before you listen to this one. Uh, and so to Two weeks ago, we kind of introduced, talked a little bit about how our church got to the point, Alan, where we felt like we needed uh, to do a workshop like this and kind of how God laid it on my heart. And then last week, we talked about the first point in the curriculum, and and this is curriculum that I've written. I don't tell you that so you think anything about me. I just tell you that. So, you know, we're not using anybody else's stuff. This is something that God gave me from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. So in last week's podcast episode, we talked about what it meant to personally love God. And so today we're going to transition a little bit and we're going to talk about what it means to purposefully teach our children about God. And we're going to camp out in verse 7 of Deuteronomy 6 today. But before we do that, uh, you might remember the discussion questions that we left you with uh, last week. We talked about different discussion questions and things that you could grow upon. We talked about uh, what time do you do your quiet time every day? When do you pray? Out of eight regularly uh, scheduled worship services a month, how often do you attend? All those kind of things. And then family devotions. And so, Alan, before we jump into point two, I know you grew up in a godly home and your parents were lifelong members here. Their parents were lifelong members here. I want to ask you, you know, I know you mentioned in one of the previous episodes, I think episode one, uh, that you don't ever remember something like this being offered in our church. And, and I agree with you in that. But that doesn't take away from the fact that for many decades there have been godly families and godly parents in our church. Just because we didn't have a workshop doesn't mean they weren't here or didn't exist. So from your experience, I've heard you talk about your mom and dad a lot. Just talk to me a little bit briefly about the godly home that you grew up in and, and how it's different from many homes today. We did spend a lot of time at church. That was our way of life. That was a way of life for a lot of folk back then. Oh yeah. But we never considered that there would be anything else to do on Sunday. <laughs> wow. Our Sunday afternoons were spent in such a way that we would be prepared for church Sunday evening. Mm -hmm. I was in my late 50s when my dad died, and he had never in those years raised his voice at me. Wow. He was always very deliberate. He did not come home from work every night and say how much he loved me, and he didn't yeah. wake me up before he went to work and tell me he loved me. But he took care of me, and I never doubted either of my parents' love for me by the way I was treated. I was uh, given opportunities that maybe most of my siblings weren't just because of the time in which I grew up. Yeah, My parents were more established uh, in their lives. They had had three kids of experience yeah, to, oh yeah. uh, to deal with me. <laughs> and uh, so, I, you know, I remember... A lot of the things that my parents did for me or did with me, the time they spent with me. You know, I won't say that there weren't times when I wasn't disciplined or made to do things that I didn't think I should. You know, we were expected to act a certain way. And we were told oftentimes when we would go other places, remember who you are. That's right. And nobody better not tell me that you were misbehaving. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, and, and I think it's interesting just how much times have changed from that. I mean, you mentioned simply about the Sunday thing. I mean, <laughs> I mean, there are so many things that are grappling at one another's attention. A few weeks ago, Hannah and I drove down to the beach, and we did so on a Sunday afternoon, and uh, just all the different activities that were going on. 
mm-hmm. and to see uh, church parking lots with hardly anybody in them. I know we don't do Sunday services, but down in the low country, that's still a pretty popular thing. And so, so I definitely uh, agree with you on that. All right, so let's talk about Deuteronomy chapter 7. I'm going to go ahead and read that and then talk about our second point that was covered in our Family Matters curriculum. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7, You shall teach them diligently to your children. Them is referring to the law of God. And shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. The second thing that I think we need to talk about when it comes to how to raise children in a godly home is to purposefully teach them. Uh, how are our children going to know who God is and what He's done in our life if we don't teach them about Him? And so I think that is imperative. The verse of Scripture that, that really gets my heart is Romans ten fourteen. We often apply this to preachers and pastors, but I think it can also have a lot to do in the home. How then will they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in Him of whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? As a parent, you are your child's number one teacher. The pastor is to come alongside you in corporate worship services and guide you in that and reaffirm what you've already taught at home. The Sunday school teachers in the church are to do the same thing. The deacons are to act out service in front of that child. All those things. But you are that number one teacher that God has given to your child. And Alan, I I know parents freak out. Uh, We're we're getting ready to come up on a new school year and meet the teacher night comes. And parents, I've seen parents freak out about, oh, I want this teacher. I want that teacher. But what about you as the teacher? Right? Like what about? How do you care about how you process things as a teacher? You care about what your kid has at Sand Hills Elementary or Middle School, but what about in the home? Well, I think a lot of times now, children, their education in all forms of education are left to the schools. Mm -hmm. The parents are not participating much in their education, their their care and upbringing. Um, They're leaving all of that to the schools and there's much more to life than the education you get with your schools there's uh, skills Uh, one thing that you hear often is is that the poor communities don't have fresh uh, fruits and vegetables and they're forced to um, use all this ultra process with a lot of chemicals well, the majority of those folk don't know how to prepare meals with fresh ingredients. Exactly. You know, because they haven't been taught. I can remember as a child, if your children, if you think and you can tell your children aren't getting it, yeah, it's okay. They will remember that when they get to the age where they do get it. It yep. will click in their minds. Yep. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree with that, and, and I just think it's important, you know, we, we worry about who's teaching our kids and what they're being taught, but at, at home, that parent has the best responsibility to be the best teacher they've ever had, best opportunity. Uh, so one thing I want to share is that God has given you as the parent your specific child for a reason and a purpose. Uh, you might be listening to the podcast today, and you're like, man, I'm really struggling with X, Y, and Z with my child. They're, you know, whatever issue you're facing, no matter what their age is, there are hard stages in raising Uh children and so uh, I know there were times I was really hard and there were times that your parents had to do certain things with you that that's the thing with all children but as a parent you need to remind yourself that God chose you to be your child's parent he could have chosen anybody else but he chose you and so Psalms 139, 13 through 14 says, For you were formed my, or for you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. And so even when we were in our mother's womb, God knew we were going to have the parents that we have. Uh, and so that's important to remember. So from verse 7, there's three things that I think you can apply to your home and how you can purposefully teach your children the ways of the Lord. Number one, you've got to intentionally talk to your children about God. 
Look at verse 7 there. Hopefully, hopefully you have a Bible in front of you. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house. When Moses is saying them and talking of them, in the Hebrew he is re- referencing the commandment that was just given in verses 4 through 6 uh, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. So as Christian parents and families, we are stewards of our child's spirituality. We are a steward of that. We talk all the time, Alan, about being a good steward of our money and being a good steward of our talents. But your child's spirituality as a parent, that is so important. And you as a parent do not need to expect the church to be your child's only feeding source. And so that's why this first point is important. Intentionally talk to your children about God. The church is to come alongside you to equip you, but the church can't do it all. If you bring them every time the doors are open, we get them three to four hours a week. Just three and four hours a week. Correct. And so that doesn't equate for, oh, I'm sick or, oh, I can't make it or whatever. You got three, four hours in an evening, at least, usually, uh, with your child. And so we need to be, we need to intentionally feed in the home by talking with them about the Lord. Warren Wiersbe said, Moses admonished parents to discuss God's word in the home among the children and to allow the word to guide their minds and hands as they work throughout the day. These are conversations about what God is doing in your personal walk and your family's life and the life of your church. And I think before we go to the second thing, I do want to say that this is important for me to point out. And I did point this out uh, when I did the in-person workshop last month. Do not talk about negative things that are going on in the church or frustrations that you have with the pastor, the staff, or the deacons. Don't do that in front of your children. Or really anything, your work life, yeah. your other family, mm-hmm. that, is a, that is a poison to them. Oh, exactly. It's a poison. And, and specifically with the church, it's a huge poison. And I think several reasons that it's important is because it's going to negatively affect your kids in ways that will turn them against God and against the church for many years, maybe without you even realizing it. Right. And you mentioned things outside of the church talking negatively about it's going to cause them to think that negativity is not just okay, but that negativity is the norm. Uh Uh-huh. And so I think that's important. And if you have issues with the church, we all do, sometimes, some way, form or fashion, discuss it with your spouse. Don't discuss it with your kids. Every now and then you need to vent. You really do. Yeah. And oftentimes that's just, that's all it is, is you just need to hear yourself say it out loud and move on with your life. And children aren't at a state of maturity that can discern venting versus fact oh yeah exactly i agree with that uh alan i'm reminded of ephesians 4 29 let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths but only such as good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear Mm -hmm. that's kind of what we're talking about that's exactly what we're talking about if you want to purposefully teach your kids the ways of god intentionally talk with them about god secondly spend time together in the home with the lord we know that family time is very important family time should be treasured and also protected Uh, and not only should the lord be the center of conversation in our homes but we must spend time together with him deuteronomy 4 7 says when you sit in your house back in the day you might remember this i don't know if y'all had one or not but families used to have these big large king james white bibles that sat on the table that had all kind of different things in it that you would write uh you know so and so got married on this day so and so died on this day all of that do you remember family bible yep did you have one Mm -hmm. and so these bibles uh were so important but see the thing about it is not in all cases in a lot of cases they were only open if somebody died or got married or was born right and they weren't necessarily used all the time and so uh, i'm not saying you need to go out and you need to buy a big old white king james bible but it was a symbol exactly it was a symbol exactly and and more than that you know i want to encourage you as as parents to make the word accessible for your kids make sure they have their own bible 
uh, even if they can't read yet. It's it goes back to that symbolism thing. Gets them used to taking the Bible where they go, and also on their iPads. I know a lot of your kids have. Uh, smart devices, and and I won't get on a tangent about that, but a lot, hey, that's just a fact, right? And so make sure that the Bible app is on there and make it accessible to them, not just spending time in the Word as a family, but also in prayer, and not just meals, but at any time. Yeah, and if you can't, if your children can't read, read to them. Exactly. That's what the experts say is one of the biggest things to help your child's education is to read to them when they can't. Yep. And it's okay to read to them even after they can exactly i mean it just shows that you're engaging and that you are interested in god's word and so they're going to want to follow your example nine times out of ten i promise you when you get to be an old man and you're sitting around with your thoughts you're going to remember the times that you sat in your parents lap with their arms around you and read stories to you or read books to you yep i agree i agree with that that's good stuff. Um, all right, so the third thing that you can do to uh, purposefully teach your children about God is to do activities that teach them the ways of the Lord. So intentionally talk with them, uh, you know, purposefully make sure that you spend time in God's Word with them, and then also do activities that reaffirm this. Verse 7 of Deuteronomy 6, And when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise, this verse shows us the commands of the Lord were to be the topic of the conversation all day long. Long. I asked myself a question in preparing for this, Alan. I said, how many uh, words do I speak a day? Now, I don't want anybody to comment on this, but the average person speaks 30,000 words a day. So that's up to you whether I'm below or I'm going to go ahead and say you're below that. I think, uh, but you know, it just depends, right? Depends on the day. Depends it depends who you're on with. the day, yeah. Um, and so, and I'd probably say the same for me. So, if the average person speaks thirty thousand words a day, how many of those words are about the Lord? I mean, by percentage, by word count. So, I do believe that one way you need to show your children the ways of the Lord is you do need to discipline them. Don't forget that God disciplines you and I when we disobey Him. And I'm reminded of Hebrews 12, verses 6 through 11. And if you have a copy of God's Word, you can flip there or I'll read it for you. For the Lord disciplines the one He loves and chastises every son whom He receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom His Father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time, as it seemed best to them, but he disciplines us for our good, that we may share his holiness. For the moment all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields a peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So, discipline is biblical. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to read all these verses. Let me give a few verses that you can look up on your own if you need to pause this. Feel free to do that. Uh, Because I know it's hard uh, when you discipline your children, uh, but it is going to be a whole lot harder on you as a parent when you realize how long you let them slide. It's going to be a whole lot harder. Proverbs 3.11 Proverbs chapter 3, verses 11 through 12 speaks about discipline. Proverbs 23, verse 14 speaks about it. Proverbs 29, 15, and Proverbs 13, 24. All of those speak about discipline and biblically. And when you discipline your children, you show that you love them. So I want to end today's episode on uh, some discussion questions that you can think about uh, over the over the next week before next week's episode is released. What are some practical ways that you can begin a conversation with your children about God at home? The other is how often do you spend time together as a family? How much of that time can you start spending with the Lord as well? So come up with how many hours you intentionally spend, not unintentionally, but intentionally, that you have set aside for the family that no matter what comes up, that's your family time. And out of that family time, how much of that is is the Lord involved and in the focus of that? And so what act the, the last question, um, discussion question, 
is what activities have you taken your kids to that promote the Lord and reinforce and reinforce what they are learning at church and at home? This could be Christian concerts. This could be vacation Bible school. This could be, I mean, church, obviously, but other different things. There are, the Christian community is still somewhat large in the southeastern United States. I remember uh, that, you know, my mom took me to a VeggieTales concert. You know, I just thought that was the best thing in the world, mm-hmm. you know. And so I think uh, I think all that is really, really important. Summer camps. Yeah. Camp that's La Vida, one. Camp McCall. Yeah, yeah, those are really big too. So do those activities with your kids. Yeah, another thing you can do too is let them participate in your ministries. Oh, yeah. You know, if your, your ministry is visitation, take them with you. That's where, right. Where appropriate. That's right. Uh, to visit. Um, you know, it may be traumatic if you are called to uh, an ICU unit because somebody was unexpectedly in a crash or something of that nature. Yeah. But if you're making a home visit or if somebody's had a routine procedure and they're progressing well, show your children what it is to yes. minister to others and, and how they can do that in the future. And, and live that out in front of them. Yes. Help, let them help you. In preparing your Sunday school lesson, if you're a teacher, let them study with you. Get them to help you study your lesson. Yep. Let them see that in action. Yeah, I exactly. Totally, I totally agree with that. I think that's that's really good stuff. So any other closing thoughts, Alan, before we wrap up this episode? I think that's it. All right, guys, this is the third in our mini series on the Family Matters. And so we look forward to having you with us. And thank you for tuning in to the Menorah Podcast. I want to remind you the purpose of the Menorah Podcast is to speak the light, share the light, and send the light of Jesus Christ all across the world through podcast ministry. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Goodbye, guys.